Shalom, Rastafari, Assalamu alaikum, peace to the kings and the queens and the earth. How's everybody doing today and this Monday? Hope you're having a great beginning of the week and um, hope your week goes and continues to improve. Just wanted to give a big shout out again to everyone who's been supporting. I really appreciate it, even the small views or to the large views, even just the one view. Um, hope it makes a difference in your day. Hope you're fed some food. And um, again, if you have any suggestions for me, to, of some things you'd like for me to address or talk about, please DM me or link me. I'd be happy to uh, address them or talk about them. Um, today, again, it's still June. It is actually still uh, Men's Health Month. I know there's some, definitely some other uh, months, but it's also uh, Men's Health Month. So I want to just go into uh, an issue that most men are having that we don't address, and that's the triggers, emotional triggers and spiritual triggers. And basically the... The title of this podcast is Be Careful of Your Triggers and Stay Away from People Who Try to Trigger You Also. Um, So basically, <clears throat> looking into it, the motivation that you get from being a better person or being um, in control of your emotions, motivation is for that, is that when you're out of control of your emotions, I've even been around myself as far as I just, you know, thought that I had my emotions in check and then all of a sudden... Um, get into a relationship or get in with a person who, you know, all of a sudden kind of triggers you way more than you ever imagined. That actually brings out way more triggers that you actually have that you may not have known that you need to heal from. And that's one lesson that I did learn during that time is that I got to a point where I decided that, oh my gosh, I need to heal on a whole different level, right? Like I just, this was around 2018 too and about two years into it when I really got out of control of my head. Like I started just, I don't know what I was doing. But, you know, I don't blame someone from bringing that out, but I definitely, um, it was exposed in a way for me. So it's not no blame on them. It's more blame on me because if I had my, had everything, um, healed by then, maybe my reactions would have been different. It would have been so volatile, just screaming and yelling and punching holes in walls and, you know, being destructive and and saying some wild shit and not having my emotions checked. And this in turn um, is actually killing you softly, especially for men. So one is to actually heal so we can have our emotional triggers in check. That's the motivation really um, is because of the fact that It is a situation that you want to be, excuse me, in control, right? No one, no one likes to be out of control. You know, there's like, there's times like, for instance, I've, I haven't had a drink in almost, it's, it actually will be, it's, yeah, it's four years in June. So it's been so long. It's been four years since I had a drink and, um, I have no motivation to have it, but I just don't like to be out of control one, right? So when you get, when people don't understand when you are having any trigger, situation you are completely out of control sometimes um i've been around people who just spiral completely out of control it starts and it's so fast you can't even stop them and and once they've come through this tornado there's been damage that's been done there's been things that have been said there's been things that have been you know come out and there's there's some kind of reaction and some emotional reaction is usually tears and then that and when you don't heal from that you continue to be in that process. You can continue to be in that circle. You continue to assume someone says some kind of trigger to you, you go completely out of control. I have been through this situation. And once I got to a point where I remember I moved out to Coburg, I was in a situation where I was definitely by myself in the middle of nowhere, working for a company, um, was able to still work out through the pandemic because of a private gym that I was able to go to on territory. And then reading more books and really get into my health fully, not just, you know, looking up at and taking a few things, but really get into my health and just breaking down and healing. I needed that time alone. And I felt that during those six months, especially, I definitely improved in my emotional stance and my emotional foundation, which is important for men. We need to be in control. We need to not spaz out. We need to not, you know, say certain things and get out of control and, and we need to be strong in our in our sense so we can because when we react, it's, it's a different type of reaction. Right. We are stronger. We, we you know, we yell, we yell. So to have that under control is extremely important. Again, I, I like to also have this, the, um, you know, what's happening in your life, what's happening in your situation? What are you hurting from? 
These are things that you have to identify to get better with identifying your emotional triggers and, and then also handling them because it's really up to you. I don't blame. I used to blame people. I used to say, man, you, why you trigger me? Why you trigger me? And that's the that's not the truth. A person only triggers you if you are easily triggered. Now, I don't like I've been around people um, who are evil and um, I pray for them because you have karma coming your way. But they loved to trigger people emotionally because they just what are you going to do? You know, they played their whole narcissistic stance. And so they would trigger. And I didn't, you know, once I found out it was too late, um, a true narcissist will trigger you and then see the reaction. And then when you explode and give them what they want, they then turn around and play victim like they didn't exp- like get your emotions under control. But they'll poke you. They'll press they'll make you they'll press that button. Right. There's a nuclear button that we all have. They'll make you press it. They'll like dare you to press it. And when you don't, they'll just they'll just go out of control until you do. And then when you do. All of a sudden, they're the victims now. No, it doesn't matter what I say. You shouldn't react that way. Like, there's no reaction that would ever merit. I had people in my life that don't ever understand that. They'll come at you, yell at you, and you yell back. All of a sudden, they're they're like, oh, my God, I got to leave now. But they give you that energy. They bring that energy to you all the fucking time. And then they want you to accept the energy, accept the wave and control. My thing is, is that... Even with a foundation with you, even if you're emotionally in control, like, you know, I've, I think I've, I've improved over the past years, every year I'm getting better. And sometimes I felt like I got better last year. And then, and then there's a, there was a test to let me know that I still need to heal. And I still came over and I still got better. And I am much better than I was last year. If you, if anyone listening to this understood how I am talked about on a continuous basis and I ignore it, you're talking about a person who knows how to handle emotional triggers. I should... You know when you can take revenge on somebody when you just don't because you still feel sorry for their their entire being like you're just an emotional triggered foul evil person and so is everybody else who's followed and believed you um you let that person go right because you're away from them but if there's a person in your life that is con- constantly trying to trigger you eliminate that person because even if you're strong you know the, that person almost to me knows that they're trying to do that to you, right? They're they're, they're just poking you. And they know you're you're stronger than you're usually. They know you, you're probably in control, and you know you can handle it. But they like for whatever reason, if a person tries to just trigger you every single time they're trying, you know they're trying to get away from them because you don't need that irritation, right? You don't need to be tested by a person who's supposed to you're supposed to care about, right? If a person unknowingly tests you because God puts you in a situation, that's different. But if they're trying to test you. Get away from them. It doesn't really make sense. And especially for men, we, <clears throat> again, we need to be in control. We need to be on our on our shit, so to speak. And if someone's trying to, to knock us out of our control, continuous basis, then they don't care about us, right? That's a selfish being. That's something selfish that they need to deal with and they need to be alone and they need to go heal also. Um, And then also, again, um, reading books, reading emotional books, again, going to the gym, getting our health right, reading books, reading things that, um, can help us mentally. I think there's, I, I read enough, but I need to read more. I need like to get back, you know, just to, to fine tune emotionally. It's almost like a therapeutic situation and trying to really handle our situ- our triggers. Now, this is basically also in a sense of like, even through relationships or just through person to person, through people you work with, people, your teammates, whatever, people in your circle. Um, you want people around you who care about you. If they care about you, they know they're not, they're not even going to try to trigger you. They wouldn't even come up in their instinct, right? But if you go around people who like are at work or just people who just want to say certain things that trigger them, stay away from them. And then also arm yourself with um, the basis of trying to get better. Now, how do you get better at handling your emotional triggers for the conclusion? Literally, it's just inside of your head and inside of your heart and soul. And you need to heal and arm yourself to get stronger. That is case to case, right? Obviously, I can say the basics. Keeping yourself healthy. Keeping yourself away from toxic people. Keeping, keeping, your, keeping your eyes and your mind away from toxicity that you're ingesting through uh, media, through what you're watching, through what you suggest, to what's your passion, right? Um, my passion is always going to be in my people's history, um, talking and things like this. Uh, working out, going to the gym, and just giving—I just want peace at this point in my life, right? I just want a, a peaceful 
time and I want to be able to <clears throat> do my music, do my podcast, speak, whatever. I have uh, various hats that I can do and I want to do them all very well. I definitely want to enjoy them as well. And I definitely want to be able to handle the success, but also handle rejection in a way that it wouldn't trigger me emotionally or make me feel a certain way. The triggers ultimately are our responsibility, right? We we need to handle that. And, I, and I've learned that over the years. This is something that I've learned. I'm not just, you know, when you hear me in this podcast, I'm still going to be humble because I'm never going to point the finger because I've, I've been there myself, right? There's some of these podcasts that's like, you need that, you, you, you. And I want to be like, man, I wish, you know, you kind of put yourself in a situation where to me, I just feel bad pointing the finger all the time. I really do. I'd rather just seriously um, be humble and talk about my experiences because I've done through all this stuff. And I, I honestly believe that I went through all of it to um, be able to testify, be able to give give my perspective and give my firsthand experience on some of this shit, right? So I really do think that as far as men, strong men, if you're in a household, if you're just by yourself, if you're grinding, we need to continue to handle our emotional triggers. I think that most men don't heal because we are stoic. We made tough. We uh, just go, you know, men going to therapy was looked at back when I was coming up as being like, you're crazy, you know, and now I think that it's, it's almost like necessary, right? I think that life coaching and people who just maybe wake up and if you need something to talk to or you're feeling a certain way, a lot of us deal with things, you know. I, I personally would admit I'm still sometimes battling um, suicidal thoughts, all the time. Like I feel great. And there's times where there's things that have happened to me that I just, you know, go into a really dark place. And then I have to kind of shake myself out of that. And I come out and like with a warrior. And I mean, I've been talked about, I've had, I've had some website talk about me, um, in Toronto with 92 comments of been trolling with me. And I haven't even talked to almost, I haven't talked to three women in Toronto in literally almost a decade, literally. I'm serious. I'll name the three. And I even talked to one, two of them like, oh, yeah, you know, but somehow, some way, 92 comments and a bunch of roasts and a bunch of fake accounts are just trying to just slander me in the street of a, of a place. But when I come to a spot where I'm above all that shit, I don't care about anybody who's in that group anyway, and nor is my life moving in that direction. And when you sit back and you stay quiet and humble, you just see what people would do to you to try to trigger you. And then when you don't get triggered, they actually get mad. The The energy is now on them. You know, I've had people write songs about me. You understand? And literally, um, their response was, I gave them money that they thought they were owed but just, just, just for the fuck of it. Just because. Just because. That's how you got responded to. And then that was the last thing you talked to me. And then, of course, you try to come back out and say some shit. And he looked stupid because he got taken down. So you, so you, you let me know that you were still in your face and doing all these things. You probably heard about this stuff. You probably heard of all those these things, rumors and and I don't care. I don't care. Um you know, there's there's moves that are gonna be made and I am better emotionally. Um I think that if I didn't heal emotionally the past couple of years I would have reacted. And my reaction was valid and I would have looked looked like a bully. You know, that's how this that's how this narcissistic game goes, especially especially with other people who are weak or or just have no life. As soon as a person with class reacts back on their emotional triggers, now they're playing victim. So you see how you just you just wasted time. Sometimes it's better just to move on and just be quiet and let them just continue to be do ratchet shit or let people continue to try to trigger you, do all these things because all of, when they continue to do that, you start seeing that oh you're you're really hurt in your heart. Something's going on with you. But when they they see that you're not reacting to your emotions and you don't care. Trust me, it is, it is a, re, a reflection. It's a, it's a boomerang that goes right back in their face. So men, continue to heal, continue to get better, continue to keep yourself in a positive light. Work out if you can. Stay healthy if you can. Read books. Stay strong. Motivate yourself. Motivate others. And continue to improve on your emotions. Shout out to everybody, man. Appreciate y'all. Have a good week.